Hey guys, it's Holly from Holly's Hobbies. I'm going to be showing you a video tutorial on the assembly for my newest patterns, the stuffed truck and the stuffed car. Uh, this video will cover the assembly for the major portions like the body of the truck or the car, the cab and the wheels. Um, if you're looking for more specific instructions on assembly, uh, re please refer to the pattern. Uh, for the links for the patterns, just check out the description below. Most of the assembly process for the truck and the car are actually the same. The main difference for the assembly of the body is the front part of the car doesn't have the spoiler where you're just going to join the ends of the top and the bottom panel together by slip stitching. Um, the truck will have the front spoiler that you'll insert there. So after you've arranged your um, panels going side panel, top panel, panel, side panel, bottom panel, um, you're just going to be slip stitching up the sides of um, row 1 or 15 for the side panels and along the sides of the top and bottom panels. And you're just going to slip stitch um, up each of the four pieces, making sure that the seam is all on the same side. After you've done that, you're actually going to um, flip all of the pieces together and you're going to be slip stitching up the unworked side of the top or the bottom panel and the unworked side of the other side panel. So then you're going to form a rectangular shape um, with two open ends. So let's get started and just, again, you're just slip stitching up the side of the top and bottom panel and the, um, I, in this case, it's row 15 of the side panel. So after you've completed attaching all the top and bottom and side panels there, just make sure that the seams are all um, on the one side and they're facing you um, because we're actually going to flip the piece over and uh, you're going to be slip stitching the side of the top or bottom panel to the side of the uh, side panel. So you're just going to join them here and then you're going to um, slip stitch across. Make sure that the seams are all on the outside of the piece um, and then slip stitch across um, those two unworked sides to form that rectangle. When you flip it inside out, the um, those nice neat seams are going to be on the outside of the piece. So don't worry about it, it not looking very uh, aesthetically pleasing. Once all four pieces have been uh, slip stitched together there, you're going to have the two open ends um, at either side of the body where the front and rear spoilers will go. Um, with the car, you won't have that front spoiler. You'll just be slip stitching the um, ends of the top and bottom together. Again, you'll read about that in the pattern itself. Um, but for the truck, we're going to have the front and rear spoilers. So I like to start with the... Um, the trunk door and um, you're just going to put that in the open spot there now make sure that the rows of that piece are parallel to the rows of the top and bottom piece so make sure that they're all going in the same direction um, and you're going to be slip stitching up the side of that rear piece across the top um, down the other side and then across the bottom so we're going to completely close off that one end um, with that rear trunk piece
After you finish the rear piece, you're going to add on the front spoiler. Um, so we're going to work up the side, across the top, and down the other side. Leave the bottom part unworked, because um, what's going to happen is um, after we've done those three sides, we're going to flip it inside out, we're going to stuff the piece, and then you're going to sew it closer on the outside. Um, the front bumper will go over top of that, so don't worry about the stitches being perfect. It's going to be covered up by the front bumper anyways. So after you've worked on the, the front spoiler there, up the sides, across the top and down the other side, um, we're going to flip the entire body inside out through that little um, hole we left open there. So after it's flipped inside out, um, just set aside your long um, gray piece there, your tail, because um, you're going to use that to sew close um, and hide up any little stragglers that you have up inside the body. And, and then we're going to stuff the body. Now make sure when you're doing the stuffing, don't overstuff it. I find that when you do that, um, it gives it more of a circular shape and you want it to maintain that uh, rectangular shape. After you've got the stuffing to your liking, um, you're just going to um, take that long tail that you set aside and you're going to sew close that opening that you've got there. Now, don't worry if the stitching is not perfect. As I said, the front bumper actually goes across that. So it's going to hide any imperfections that you have in your stitch. After you've finished sewing the body close, um, just take your needle and puff out the corners of the front spoiler and the rear trunk piece. I find that it gives it more uh, of a rectangular shape. It sharpens those corners a little bit after you finish the stuffing. The next part in the assembly um, for the truck or the car is the top cab and the windows. Um, if you're making the car, it's pretty similar to how you assemble this, except that you're going to have these extra two chains coming into the side of the top cab. It just helps divide up the side windows so you have that effect um, of two extra windows on each side. Um, again, they just come at the corner of where the uh, back loop row has been created on the top cab. So to start off, um, you actually are going to connect the uh, front windshield to the both side windows um, so just arrange it that the front windshield is in between the two side windows and then you're going to slip stitch up each of the sides similar to how you slip stitch the body of the truck or the car um, you're just going to do up the sides so you're going to create one long piece together Once you have attached the first side window to uh, the front windshield, you're essentially just going to repeat the exact same um, procedure on the other side of the front windshield. And just again, make sure that the seams are all on the same side and they're up facing you. When we're attaching the front cap, um, same thing, we're gonna be slip stitching through the sides. 
but you're only going to be working on the inside loop. So it would be the front loop, I guess, um, from your from your perspective. Make sure that the um, the back loop stitch that you've created there um, is facing outward. So this is the top of your piece where you don't see that ridge is on the inside. Just so you guys have an idea of the assembly, you're going to sew or stitch up through here. Then you're going to stitch across the top here. Ignore this, this comes in later. Then you're going to go across the front, across here, and then down the side using white yarn. Uh, you can use blue if you do have an exceptionally long blue um, strand, um, but I like using white so that way you don't have any, um, you can't see any visible blue stitches in your windshield. So to start off, uh, again, you've got um, the back part here, you've got that back loop um, facing as your outside cab. Uh, with the side window, you're going to be working in through the side of the white and the inside loop um, of the outside edge of the cab. So I just flip it out there. Now when you hit the corner here, you're going to continue working along the inside loop there, but then you're going to work across the top of the side window. Once you get to the uh, corner with the chains on them, tuck the chain on the inside and pretend like the chain isn't even there. So continue working around it um, with the chain underneath. That comes in later. Uh, it doesn't actually come into play while you're attaching them. So just ignore that chain, tuck it underneath. When you're doing the car and you come to the first chain here, do the exact same thing. Tuck the chain inside and continue working across it as if the chain is not there. Again, when you get to that chain, tuck it underneath um, because it doesn't make a difference when you're doing the slip stitch and continue working around it as if it was not there. Again, when you get to this point on the car and you have that extra chain, just tuck it underneath and continue working down the last side of the, the cab.
After you finish slip stitching the cab to all sides of the windows there, this is roughly what it should look like. Um, we're going to flip it inside out. Uh, it looks a lot better now. And you'll see that you have the smoother edges there. Uh, what you're going to do with the chains is you're going to pull them down over top of the, um, the seams between the front windshield and the side windows. Uh, and you're going to either take a new strand of yarn or you can, if you have any uh, leftover tails, just use those to sew those over top of the seams if you're making the car uh, you'll have those two extra chains just pull them down uh, vertically where they stand over the it's almost about the center of the side windows and sew them into place to create the illusion that you have two side windows as opposed to one Um, I position the eyes let me just get my trick here about one third of the way up on there so if you're counting from the bottom it's probably about two rows above the bottom um, and probably about four or five from the top um, I usually try and center them in there about one stitch apart and about two stitches or so on either side of the eye um, so go ahead and sew the eye into position and then we will add the little white uh, flex after they've been sewn. In my patterns, I typically try to allot a longer tail um, for embroidery. So in the pattern I mentioned to leave a longer tail for the pupils, uh, that's to embroider eyebrows for the, the, the guy trucks or cars. Uh, for the one that I'm making right now, I'm actually doing a female one. So I'm going to embroider uh, a little bit of eyelashes, then eventually I will add in eyebrows, although I don't do that until later in the video. To attach the top cap to the truck or the car, you're going to count back 11 rows on the truck and about 12 to 13 for the car. And you're just going to line up that front windshield with that row. And you're going to take one of your tails and you're going to sew across the base of the front windshield into the body of the car or the truck. After you've done the front, you're going to do each of the side windows um, into the body. Try and line up the side windows with the seam between the top panel and the side panels, just so you're, you're getting that smooth transition there. So after you have um, sewn the windows, the front windshield and the two sides um, to the body of the truck, stuff up inside of the cab um, 
Again, don't overstuff it. Just make sure that it, it, it's stuffed firmly enough to maintain that shape. Um, and then just take your last blue tail and sew across the bottom into the body of the truck. Before you add the rims to the wheels, uh, take the tail left over from the wheel and you're just going to guide it up through the center of the, the wheel, usually on either side of round one. Just do this two to three times and pull the tail rather firmly. This is going to give the wheel a more of a donut shape rather than a sphere uh, from all that stuffing. So just do that two to three times, pull tightly and then fasten off. And then you're just going to sew around the outside of the rim into the wheel. When I'm attaching the wheels, uh, I like to count up about five rows from the bottom of the side panel. I line up the front wheel uh, directly with the front of the cab and the back wheel I usually do about halfway down the trunk uh, and it's just centered at the back there. Um, when I'm connecting them I use the long tail left over from the wheel and I guide it through the one side of the truck and then back and then what I do is I pull just slightly on it so it's got a little bit of an indent into the truck so they're not bulging it from the sides. For the car um, I place it as the same right at the front of the cab. The back wheel is about center um, with the spoiler. Again you'll see that in the pattern where um, it talks about positioning uh, these other extra little pieces. Um, I usually place the wheels around six to seven rows up as opposed to the five that I do for the truck because the, the car sits a little bit lower than the truck does uh, so the wheels sit up a little bit higher. So for the front um, and rear bumper, you essentially just take it and center it just about three or four rows above the bottom of the spoiler there. And you're just gonna sew it into place um, using the long tail that you've got left over um, and just secure it across the way there. If possible, just try and give it some definite corners when you're sewing it on. So pull a little bit tighter when you're on there just to give it more of that square shape. Um, you do it at the front and the back, same thing. You just do it about three or four rows above the bottom of the spoiler and above the bottom of the trunk and just sew into place. Um, the car doesn't have any of that, so you don't need to worry about sewing those on for the car. Um, after you've attached the uh, front and rear bumper, um, just sew the lights um, onto the corners. Um, you will wrap it around the side of the truck a little bit. I try and line up the yellow to the, to the edge of the spoiler, that seam there, and then just wrap it around. Um, like you would normally see in regular uh, cars and trucks. Now for the car, it's just going to go above that seam um, where the top and the bottom panel connect. Um, just put them right there. It's going to overlap the, the seam where it meets the side panel, um, but just sew them into place um, there. Um, and for the mouth embroidery, I do it just below the seam where the top and, and bottom panel meet at the front there. Um, other than that, the only other thing that you guys have left to assemble are the rear view mirrors and you just take that little tail and you put it right where the the cab meets the car and sew that into place the same thing goes for the truck um, and the only different this is an optional feature you can add on um, the uh, roll bars so after you've got the main body of the roll bar and you sew the two side pieces to it uh, you put the main bar at the back you sew the into place there and then you sew the last two probably about four to five rows back um, and just sew them into the trunk there you put the truck lining right around the back there and it is done